And welcome back to Eagle Classics. We're doing another coach sit down. We're here with head women's across coach Rachel Bragg as we look at the 2018 season opener, an exciting overtime win over CNU. So, Coach Bragg, that was your first game actually in charge here at Bridgewater. Can you talk a little bit about you know the preseason and just preparing for that first game? Yeah, um, it was really exciting. It was my first game as head coach. Um, I think with the preparation, there were a lot of unknowns um, just due to the fact that this was our first game. Um, and it was also CNU's first game as well. So it was kind of nice to have some facts, but a lot of it was just us playing and playing our game and doing what we needed to do in order to be the most successful that day um, to pull off the win. Anything you remember about the scouting report for the captains? It was you know, one of the stronger teams on your schedule that year. Yeah, absolutely. Um, a lot of it was based off the previous year just due to um, numbers, who returned, who didn't. Um, and I think that gave us some detail, but a lot of it was more of, okay, this is how they play. It's going to be fast-paced. They're going to pressure you. We have to be able to move the ball, take care of it. Um, defensively, we knew that they love to cut from the top of the eight, and they can catch um, those really tight passes in their sphere. So just to get that quick shot off. So we had to be with our attacker as much as possible right on them. Um, and you can kind of see that throughout the film. Um, there were some times where we weren't as tight and they were able to get goals off. So it was kind of a learning lesson for all of us. You see the first Bridgewater shot of the game there from Kristen Stark. CNU is actually going to take a, a 2 nothing lead here early, a, a goal from Katie Chess, and she'll follow up with an assist, uh, I believe, right off the draw at the beginning. So after those first two goals, you know, anything you see there that your defense stepped up later on to improve upon? It was definitely important for us to make sure that we were on top of the ball from when it was coming down from the draw and not being like and not leaving girls behind. Um, that would be wide open. I think that was really important for us, so making sure our midfielders got in as quickly as possible. I think the other thing we learned from the attacking end is in the beginning of the game you can see that we tended to force drives and shots and then once we scored it was more of the team dynamic that helped us get there instead of driving with two or three people on top of us. It's a great shot. First bridge water goal of the game there coming from Sarah Yashinsky.
seeing you taking a 3-1 lead there, and you know, we jump a little bit in the film um, to your next opportunity in transition. This is a time where we really started to like slow down, take a deep breath on the attacking end and realize that you know, they're the same level that we were and we could drive and play against them. It was a very big mental game for us. I believe just like the possession leading to your first shot of the game, was that both you know, both times Stark actually led you in transition down mm -hmm. and then ended up getting the shot attempt as well. Yes. And scoring there to get Bridgewater back within a goal. This game, we defensively, we decided to do something a little different with our zone. Um, instead of having a backer, Grace Stang, number 15, was more of a rover. So she's looking to get all of the cutters in the middle, um, which re-watching, you can see that there are a lot of gaps, but it caught CNU off guard. They weren't expecting that from us. Chess makes it four to two, and then the captains are actually going to add one more before you make your run. So, seeing you won the first seven draws of the game, but then you come out and win. It's like the next, at least the next four, four or five. Looking down the stats, did did you make any changes there? Was it just getting used to that first game of the season? Um, I think it was getting used to the the getting used to playing again. Um, because that was our first game. And I think it was just kind of figuring out, like on the circle, you have to fight and you have to fight for everything. So I think you can kind of see throughout these first couple of draws in the game where CNU is dominating, we weren't putting up as much as a fight. Um, and that was one of the things we really had to talk about and discuss on the draw circle. Um, because we had power on there. It was just being willing to double the ball um, to kind of hold it up and get that turnover if possible. So with that go making it five to two, this is where you make your biggest run of the game. Bridgewater is about to run off five straight goals to jump back into the lead here. We worked hard on our redefend. It helped us a lot more um, defensively to be able to slow the ball and then that allowed our midfielders who were doing a lot of running in this game to be able to kind of take a breath and get down there. In this game you have your three junior uh, career 100 goal scorers Anna O'Hara, Kristen Stark, and Sarah Yashinsky, and then Dwyer Neal is going back for you this year. But those are all players who it seems like play a huge role both sides of the field. Yes, absolutely. The running they have to do. Dwyer was um, full on attack for this game. So it wasn't until later we started, you know, having her take the draw once we once Sarah graduated. Um, that she kind of moved more towards the midfield position.
times in the past. And that is Neil scoring with Stark, making that great pass on the free position attempt. Again, it draws Jody Welsh, got the last one, and then this, after a battle for it, extended battle, it's Kalo Sullivan comes in and cleans that up. Turnover caused, I believe, by Mackenzie Parcell there. She was an all-state defender for you this past season. Mackenzie was always a strong defender from, you know, my first year coaching her. One of the things that she was known for um, from our team was how quickly she could get the ball up um, the field after causing a turnover or picking up a ground ball. Her ground ball stats were insane almost every year. shot placement by Dwyer Neal. How dangerous has she been for you on those crease roll type plays where she can just beat a defender and get to the cage? <laughs> She's always been very strong crease roll wise um, and we've helped her kind of develop a little more from playing that low position um, to you know playing high and being willing to take an elbow drive or a drive from up top um, and that's definitely helped expand her game a lot. So we're about to jump in the film uh, over another couple scoreless minutes, but first we're showing you cut it to a one goal game at 5-4 and got a couple of chances here, forced two saves from the CNU goalie during this stretch. There is the tying goal coming with about eight minutes left in the first half from Anna O'Hara. 5-5 five, five now, and we saw CNU score right off the draw, but now you do the same. And that was a great draw. Looking for that immediate pass. Tony had great speed, and seeing Anna, it was a phenomenal goal. Eagles and 
final score, four straight in the lead, six to five. Saved by Michaela. Okay, so Michaela Brooks, this was her first collegiate game as well. Coming in at Bridgewater had great goalkeeping for four years from Rachel Gruber and then you know Brooks coming in. She would go on to her second team all Odak that season, lead the conference in save percentage. So clearly she stepped right in as a freshman and was a huge part of your defense that year. Absolutely. Um, I think it was a fantastic year for Michaela Brooks. Um, she knew right away that that was the role she was going to be stepping into. So we talked to her a lot about it. Um, but at the end of the day, you have to have the mental mindset to just push past any reservations or questions you have about being a freshman in that position and you just have to step up because that's what the team needs. And she did a great job of doing that. Like another Brooks save there. We're down under six minutes ago in the first half. You're still leading by one. Got the rebound, got the shot. Yeah, another save there. Seeing you goalie, like Caitlin Reddy, it looked like you forced her into a number of good saves in this first half as well. And then Anna O'Hara picking up the rebound, so now five straight goals for Bridgewater. It's seven to five, and you're actually going to force another save here with a chance to even add to that run before CNU gets back on the board. Our placement definitely got better throughout the game, but that was... She was a great goalie, but that was definitely part of the reason we were um, struggling to score on her, was just making sure our shots were placed in the proper area. For CNU of almost 14 and a half minutes. Of course, we're going to see a period at the end of the game where you hold them scoreless for even longer.
CMU is now tied at 7-7. Seven to seven. I believe you're going to run most of this shot clock down before you get the goal that gives you the lead into halftime. Is that yes. something you want to make sure you got a good set? Do you remember, you know, this possession and maybe what you ran on it? Um, no, I what don't remember, honestly. <laughs> that was such a long time ago. It was probably, it's looking like we ran our play 21, um, which is just coming off. It starts with a drive, and then there's you're forcing the cutter on the elbow to their defender to either come to you to double or to um, stay with their attacker. And if that's the case, then the drive just continues to go off, um, and it's more of a rotation. But we're definitely taking our time. We told them to be as smart as possible. We knew that this was going to be a tight game. Um, and there was a lot of mental toughness needed to continue to push through this game. Um, we definitely ended on a high note, obviously. But going into halftime, we knew that they were going to come back and be ready to go and play us. And we had to be as prepared as possible to do that. Start the second half. You're leading eight to seven. Turnover there, both big plays, but it looked like giving it away again to sort of put your defense back under pressure. Yes, and part of that was because we were all at the same level, so there wasn't really anyone to be able to throw the ball to like start our transition, um, which is something that we continuously improved on throughout the season. Position goal there ties it up at 8 8 early in the second half. This game was tied at 5 5, and then 
from every number on from seven, you know, until we get into overtime. So, uh, you know, you may have just had this experience with your team this past year winning two tight one goal games that came right down to the wire. You know, how much yeah. does this help to come out on top in a game like this where every possession in both ends matters? Oh, it's, it's huge. Um, it's always really exciting to be in a game like that as a coach, but it's more exciting for them because they have to decide as a team what they're going to bring to the table and how they're going to push past to make that next goal to um, continue to build our momentum. And it, it's all a mindset at the end of the day. Um, and we were strong. We stayed strong throughout this game. And that was definitely really important for us to be able to pull off the win. We did a great job crashing in the second half, for sure. Um, we just have to make sure we weren't fouling while we were pushing them out to put them on the line. So despite this being such a back and forth game for this stretch, that's actually now a four to one CNU run they're on, mm -hmm. and you're gonna, you know, come down and win the draw and score within about a minute and a half. So this was a crucial moment to keep pace. Absolutely, and the team knew that, um, and that was one of the things we talked about was making sure that we gave ourselves the best opportunity possible. Um, I don't think that this team expected to be in such a tight game with CNU just because some of them had played them in the past um, and you know the f only thing I really said to them before we went out to warm up was there is no pressure on you you play your best you do your best win or lose it's okay like we are going to push through this. This is going to make us better no matter what. And just give it your all. And they did that.
was a great shot by Sarah. That ties it up at 9 9. That junior trio we talked about, Yashinsky, O'Hara, Stark, all had three plus points in this game. Great save by Mac. So we have a, a stretch here of a couple minutes without a goal, and Brooks is going to make two saves during this run with the game tied. You know, she ended up missing some key games, both freshman and sophomore year with injury. Last year was playing great, and then of course had the season uh, unfortunately canceled at that point. You know, now as she goes into her senior year, you know, how excited is the team to hopefully have her, you know, full strength for a full season and what you know, she can do for the team there. Well, I don't think she would let her senior year be taken away anyway. She just has that mindset. Um, no matter, you know, if her previous injury is bothering her, or whatever it is, she's going to push herself to work through it, which um, I think is a fantastic mindset for a goalie. Um, but also as a captain, she's um, this is her second year being a captain of our program, and she pushes her teammates to get better every single day. Um, and that's just the type of, you know, player she is. Um, it was definitely difficult without her. Um, we've had to have some, a few substitute goalies. Um, like Olivia Carson for a while, um, Michaela's their sophomore year. Um, but her mindset last year was she wanted to get back to the place she was when she started at Bridgewater. Um, you know, and we kind of had to alter that mindset a little because it's not about going back. It's about what we can accomplish now with potential limitations um, that she has due to her injury. Um, but she's worked past all of that. She's pushed herself to be the best possible goalie she can be um, to make the team as strong as they can be and the defense as strong as they can be. Great placement. Dora knew immediately how to get the shot off before her defender was able to fully crash on her. The goals are going to come hard and fast here. It's going to be seven goals in less than five minutes, which probably doesn't give us too much of a clue for what comes after that. <laughs>
just a little too slow to crash. That was actually the, the point we don't show here where you took a timeout after the two goal. Mm -hmm. CNU run. Do you remember anything, you know, talking to the team there before coming back out for these final 17 or so minutes? I probably just told them that we have to stay tighter on our cutters defensively and we just have to take care of the ball. Um, as you can see, you know, there were a lot of times when the ball was on the ground and we were fighting for it um, and we just didn't come up with it. And so that was going to be really important. We had to keep possession of the ball and um, stay tighter on our cutters so those goals uh, previously weren't going to happen again. Uh, a big save there, preventing us from becoming a two-goal deficit, which mm -hmm. neither team you know, would actually face a two-goal deficit the entire second half. great transition. And a great shot. Kristen was always really good at those last minute angle shots. She knows exactly where to place them. There we go. Or at least the second time we've seen score right off the draw. Mm -hmm. You can kind of see how our zone started to break down with you know, the later it got into the game. Um, they started to get tired, but what helps the most with a zone is all the communication um, and making sure that every single person within that zone is doing their job and covering it all. And um, that's something that we continue to improve on throughout the season, but you could definitely see how we struggled at times during this game. So we just saw that run of seven combined goals in under five minutes uh, and came back with the first Brook save after that CNU goal, but at this point, the captains aren't going to score for the rest of the game nearly 18 minutes, um, and neither team is going to score for about 10 minutes here. Um, Brooks makes four saves during that stretch, CNU hits a post as well. Um, you know, what were some of the, the things your defense did to really lock it, lock it down here? They stepped up. They knew that it was going to come down to being as strong as possible and making sure that we took care of our possessions. They were willing to take risks, which is what I love about our defense. Um, they don't play it safe. And, you know, we had to be just as aggressive as CNU was being while they were driving or um, making those passes on the inside. So just making sure we crashed as hard as possible without fouling. The last thing we really wanted to do was put them on the line um, to have that free position shot.
great save. Yeah, again, Brooks making a, a big stop to keep it a one goal game for you. That coming with about 13 minutes left. Um, and can you talk a little bit about the start your team had to the season after this game? You start 5 0. Oh, You've got a national ranking for a week in the Nike U.S. Lacrosse Magazine poll, and then later you were up to 8-2 on the season after a big win over Roanoke, which we previously featured here on this Eagle Classic series. So let's talk about you know some of the success that team had early in that 2018 season. Yeah, this was a strong year for us, um, and it was really exciting, obviously, as my first year as a head coach, just seeing the growth that the team made and... Honestly, I think the biggest kick was how it started um, with this game. Honestly, they came up to me on the bus and they were like, Coach, you were right. We we won. And I, I they go, we didn't think we would. And so it's kind of building that mindset that on any given day, any team can win, no matter who they are. Um, and I think that that really kind of turned the corner for this team to have that tough mindset going into conference and understanding that it doesn't matter who we're playing on any given day if as long as we bring our best then we're going to compete um, and I think that was definitely the biggest thing for us during the 2018 season. Ooh. Oh, Great interception by Sarah. We got lucky there. We're a little sloppy with the ball. <laughs> so Dwyer Neal got, got that restarted there. You know, she has decided to come back for a fifth year you know, for this team after you know, last season was canceled. She was leading the team at that time in scoring, ground balls, and draw controls. Mm -hmm. So what type of boost is that going to give your roster this year that has a lot of freshmen to have a fifth year senior like that back? Uh, she's already making an impact just from our practices in the fall. Um, she wasn't able to make all of them because being a graduate student, you have night classes. Um, but the ones that she was able to, she's done a really good job getting to know all these freshmen and helping them on and off the field. And she's always been like that. Um, she is, once again, uh, a captain. So that has definitely kind of helped her find her role for this 
years team, um, which can be hard to find as a fifth year. So just kind of figuring that out. But she she's fantastic with our freshmen, and she's constantly pushing everyone on the field. Um, she has a very strong presence and voice um, for our team. So she's playing a really big role this year. Continuing to talk a little bit about the 2018 season as we have this long scoreless stretch, <laughs> defense holds. See a new scoreless, as I mentioned, for almost 18 minutes to close this out, but then you'd have a couple shutouts, I believe, later on. Yes. And a scoreless streak there of, I didn't write it down, but I want to say it hit 140 or so minutes. Yes. You know, Michaela does her job. Um, and she does it very well, and she has only improved since her injury occurred at the end of this 2018 season. Um, and she has the mindset to continue to get better no matter what. Um, always asking, always watching film. Um, she studies who she's going up against and what the attackers do and how she can defend them. Um, and that's really important for a goalie. Yeah, that injury coming at the end of 2018, the 2018 team also tying the program record with 11 wins, but then Brooks was out for the playoff game against Shenandoah, so clearly that played a role. That was the team's third straight playoff appearance. Uh, yeah. So clearly a goal this year would be to get back there and, you know, have a shot there with, with your goalie in there. Absolutely. Um, you know, we really... One of the things that helped us last year, even though the season was canceled, um, was just focusing on one game at a time. And we were on the right path to get back to playoffs if our season was not canceled. You could just see it with the team chemistry, how they were playing at practice, um, their mindset, the physicality. Everyone was ready to work and get better. And so I think that really helped us with our team chemistry this year, um, especially having such a big freshman class of 11. Um, this is by far our biggest freshman class. So um, it's just making sure everyone's on the same page. And our upperclassmen have done a very good job of that. Well, I asked that question. It looked like CNU might have got away with a foul a minute ago. And yes. Then had an odd man rush the other way, but another save there. Well, and here we're telling them, just take your time. Like, don't don't force it. There's no need to. Um, we want to keep uh, possession as much as possible. And, um, you know, Tony to Anna, they worked extremely well together their whole time at Bridgewater. So that was the goal that tied it up at 13-13 from Anna O'Hara with about four minutes to go. You see there, Sarah Yashinsky nearly comes right off the draw. Yes. And she had been doing that throughout the game, and it was successful. Um, and we had talked to her about it, just making sure that we are keeping possession in this game, that was going to be the biggest thing, especially with it being one goal almost every time. Yeah, we saw that patience led to your goal that gave you the lead at the end of the first half. And yes. Then, you know, there with that O'Hara goal to tie it up, the final one that would be scored in regulation. Great in 
interception by Kayla. Yeah, tell us a little bit about Kayla O'Sullivan. We talked about a couple other defenders already and you know what role she had during her time at Bridgewater. Kayla was our ground ball queen. That's what I called her. Um, she could just, it was like a magnet on her stick with that ball. And um, she helped us a lot on the draw and she made sure that she was constantly doing her part. She pushed the defenders, which I think gave our senior class, our current senior class, um, the motivation they needed to continue that legacy that Kayla left. Um, you know, she came to a couple practices after she graduated and you could hear her just say, get low, get low in practice because um, they weren't. And we were losing the ball on the defensive end um, and our attackers were scoring off of it. And so just having her in that presence, it kind of clicked with the senior class that they have to have that same mindset and they have to push our current freshmen um, the way Kayla pushed them. One more save from Brooks there, so we're, we're under a minute left in regulation for the game tie. Even though I know how the game's going to end, I still have those nerves inside. So as we head into overtime, you had to defend an extended possession there to stay in this game, and you're going to have to do the same thing in overtime as well. Yes. will stay strong really the entire shot clock on this possession. We're about to get to the counterattack here that sets up your winner from O'Hara. Definitely stressed me out when we made that pass. 
but they wanted it and they knew. I mean, a goal like that. We just, it was very exciting for us. Um, and a great way for us to start. And that feeling that you get when you can, you're able to push yourself through the entire game, goal for goal, not letting that pressure be a negative for you, but a positive to you know, have the mindset of, okay, we're not gonna let them win. Um, it was a huge, this was a great way for us to start the season.